when Chris Watts' pregnant wife Shannon and their two young daughters disappeared in August of 2018, news crews arrived at their home to interview the man, who by all predictions should have been a distraught and emotional mess. However, his strangely aloof and cavalier attitude, as some news outlets reported, immediately raised suspicions. Though, for several days, Watts stuck to his story that his wife had returned home from a business trip, then promptly disappeared with their children, he admitted they had had an emotional conversation the night before she left, but claimed it was nothing more. He even went as far as to tell an officer, I couldn't sleep at all last night, and that he quote, missed them throwing chicken nuggets at me, hours after he murdered them. Further investigation with help from the FBI revealed what are believed to be female bodies on the oil field outside of Denver, where Chris Watts worked. Records showed the family was deeply in debt as well, having declared bankruptcy a few years prior to the alleged murders. The week after the televised interview, when Watts' father flew to town allegedly to comfort Watts, he reportedly convinced his son to turn himself into the authorities. Watts made a complete confession on August 16, 2018. He was charged with three counts of murder. On November 6, 2018, Watts pleaded guilty to nine charges. In exchange for his guilty plea, he was spared the death penalty. On November 19, 2018, he was sentenced to five life sentences, three consecutive and two concurrent, with no parole. According to law enforcement, on April 10, 2001, 39-year-old Navy veteran Robert William Fisher shot his wife in the head, cut her throat, and then slashed the throats of his 10-year-old son and 13-year-old daughter. After murdering his wife and children, Fisher set the family at Scottsdale, Arizona home on fire, fleeing the house before a natural gas line caused a massive explosion. Once firefighters extinguished the blaze, they found the bodies of Fisher's family inside the home and quickly discerned the woman and two children had been murdered. Shortly after the killings, police named Fisher as a suspect in the murders, believing he had committed femicide because he thought his wife was planning to leave him and he didn't want to subject his children to the stress of divorce. Fisher, an experienced hunter and outdoorsman, has never been found, and the authorities suspect he may have committed suicide or started a new life with a different identity. In 2015, the FBI released multiple age-progressed photos showing what the fugitive may look like today, and they are offering a $100,000 reward for tips leading to arrest of this wanted man. In June 2007, 40-year-old professional wrestler Chris Benoit strangled his 43-year-old wife Nancy to death and suffocated his 7-year-old son Daniel before hanging himself from a weight machine in the basement of the family's Fayetteville, Georgia home. The family's dead bodies were discovered by law enforcement on June 25, 2007 when no one had been able to get in touch with Chris or Nancy for a number of days. Investigators found Bibles next to the bodies of the victims, and a search of Chris Benoit's computer led them to believe he may have tried to resuscitate his son after killing him. Many people have speculated about why the professional wrestler murdered his wife and child before ending his own life. Following his death, scans of Benoit's brain revealed severe damage caused by concussions he suffered during his long wrestling career, leading his father to attribute the femicide to these extensive injuries. However, toxicology tests revealed steroids in Benoit's system at the time of his death, causing some people to believe he may have murdered his family in a fit of roid rage. Benoit's exact motives for killing his wife of seven years, his young son, and then himself has never been revealed, causing many to still ponder what caused a successful wrestler to commit such grisly acts. Over the course of five days in December 2001, the bodies of 27-year-old Christian Longo's wife, son, and two daughters were found in the water near the family's home in Newport, Oregon. Longo's wife and children, who ranged in age from two to four, had all been murdered prior to being dumped in the water. Their corpses were weighted down to delay their discovery. After killing his entire family by strangling them to death, Longo fled to Mexico, where he lived as a fugitive, telling people he was Michael Finkel, a writer for the New York Times. While investigating the murders, officials learned Longo was a con artist who had gotten himself and his family into serious financial trouble by forging checks and using other people's credit cards, even stealing a minivan from a car dealership by using a fake driver's license. Just prior to the killings, the Longos had moved into a pricey condo that the family's patriarch couldn't afford on his modest income from his job at Starbucks. In January 2002, 
Longo was arrested in Mexico and he was extradited to the United States and tried, convicted and sentenced to death in Oregon. Throughout the years, cases of familicide continued to skyrocket in the US and that records show they may be at an all time high. According to a study of family annihilators, the majority of these cases are men in their 30s, but there have been spikes of cases of women also causing destruction within their families as well. What I'm about to play is an audio recording of a 911 phone call from a mother who did exactly just that. However, I do warn you as this audio is very disturbing. County 911, want your emergency? I do, I have an eye, but I throw it away. No ma'am, just 